Welcome, everybody. We, well, we jumped a little bit over the hour. We were uh, discussing a couple of things as part of our preparations for today. Um, today is our last session for uh, or on VS Code AL extensions. Already our 39th Ariopa webinar. Um, today, uh, my guests uh, are Rob and uh, Johannes and uh, Christoph. Welcome, guys. I'm uh, I'm honored you to have you here and. I'm honored to have been able to run this, this series. It came up in my mind a couple of uh, weeks ago, a month or two ago, that uh, this would be a good thing to do. And like I said before in the previous uh, 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 parts of this uh, series, it's a, it's a bit uh, an egoistic one. Uh, and surely the extensions of today, uh, I have to admit that none of those three I have been really using. I have them installed due to uh, Waldo's uh, uh, AL or extension package, but I'm really going to learn a couple of things today and I've been learning quite a number of things in the uh, series up to now. So uh, thank you for being here guys. Uh, and yes, we celebrate this series. We're concluding it right now. I think we discussed, uh, well, we discussed 12 extensions uh, since we started. These are probably the most important one. There are a couple of others like the ALL Lint, which Stefan Laurent took over from Mark Rommel. And, uh, but he said I'm not finished yet. So he might be on one of uh, our sessions later. And um, we also have the, uh, um, what is it, model-based programming app. Uh, there are a couple of that might be in, in later ones. And if you have other ones that you think that should be uh, on the next session or series, let me know, please. So, um, well, these are the 12 extensions that, well, after today have been presented in this series. This was the chronological order. Um, before I'm going to uh, hand off to Rob, who will be the first speaker today, uh, let me go through the housekeeping rules. My name is Luc van Vught. I'm your moderator. I'm the moderator to this session. I will pick up the questions as always. So. Uh, your mic is muted, you cannot unmute it, but you're very welcome to use the question window to put your questions in. Um, as before in this series, I'll uh, target to pick the questions uh, that relate, for example, to Rob's uh, part uh, at the end of his uh, presentation, so that before he hands over to Johannes, we'll uh, have a look at the questions. If it's, uh, let's say, a, a more or less urgent question, I will pick it up and pose it when it relates to uh, the moment of the presentation. Yeah, so uh, be welcome uh, to uh, post your questions. Recordings, uh, uh, as you see, uh, or you might have also used on YouTube, will be put on YouTube. Um, as uh, you can see, everything is on there and today's session will be uh, also uploaded this evening, I guess. Uh, it was funny to see, and I tweeted about it, that the first session did got uh, almost 600 hits, and the other ones were quite low. And like uh, Simon said, uh, well, I didn't have time to watch it, of course, logically. I'm a bit teasing everybody, but it's worthwhile to go through them. If you don't know all the extensions, it, I, I will replay parts also because I didn't remember everything, but I surely knew, oh yeah, this one and this one is worthwhile to get some new uh, uh, to use some of those features. If you're not subscribed to our newsletter, please do so. Uh, be welcome to uh, uh, do that and get informed. Um, that is again, or that's the nice bridge to our upcoming webinars. There is a webinar planned for the 6th of July when Mark Bommel, let's say, steps into the webinars world again after being uh, uh, absent for quite a while. Um, and that probably will be the last, depending a bit on topics, but either maybe then July 20th, but that's on the verge of me going for my holiday. So probably that will be the last of this season. And then after my summer recessions, we'll be picking up things. And um, of, as always, inviting you to uh, let me know if you have an interesting topic to present yourself or a topic you would like to have present. And uh, Christoph, the, one of the presenters today, stepped into my first bullet point, Tucker uses in the daily development practice that is surely going to end up in one or more sessions after the summer, uh, talking about different, uh, well, different ways of using Docker, but pipelines, whatever things that are 
and I think should be part of uh, modern development. Um, you could say a compliment to everybody who's still doing it the old fashioned way, but you have to go this way. If you haven't done it, uh, it's understandable. It's a threshold, but uh, once you take it, uh, you won't go back anymore. And wait, maybe other ideas. So feel free to send me a mail and, and give me input on what we could do in, in the next season. So as always, my slide before I'm going to hand off to the first speaker today, thanking Fornaf for their uh, support uh, uh, already for uh, two years. So uh, Rob, I'm going to make you presenter. And uh, well, don't be afraid about the button start, don't start plot card or whatever, it's already started. Yeah, I see your screen. And I don't know if you have to, no, you unmuted your microphone, but I don't hear you speaking right now. Is yeah, this? so. Yeah, yeah yes. I do hear you. Let's get started right away. Great. So, uh, you go ahead and have fun. Yeah, so. Yeah, so thank you, Luke, and let's get started right away then. Um, so today I would like to show you how you can leverage my XLIF Sync extension to make translating your Business Central apps much easier, saving you a lot of time. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Rob van Beckham. I'm 26 years old and living in the Netherlands, uh, working at Appertunix, where I most enjoy to develop apps that allow users to make customizations all by themselves. For example, for report layouts or adding custom fields. And so starting to work with AL more and more, I instantly want to look for some tools to work more efficiently, landing on the AL code outline extension. And back then, still some things were missing for me, so I decided to actually add those features here to Andres' extension as well. And right now, I couldn't imagine working without the extensions that are now also covered in these webinars, including my own XLIF Sync extension. And with that being said, let me tell you about what exactly made me develop my XLIF Sync extension. So as you know, Business Central allows you to translate your apps with XLIF translation files. And the usual flow is like this. First, you develop making changes to your AL code. Then you build, which will generate an XLIF file without any translations, so the g.xlf file. Then you translate, take the generated XLIF file and create translation files for your target languages. And then finally, build again to actually include the translations in your app. And that's all perfectly fine until you need to release an update of your app, because if you go through this cycle again, then you will get a new generated XLIF file that you somehow need to merge with your existing translation files. And of course, you want to reuse your translations, but also want to account for changes and detect potential problems as early as possible. And exactly that was the main issue that I was facing, which made me develop my XLIF Sync extension. So how exactly does XLIF Sync help with this problem? Well, in a lot of ways, actually, but most importantly, it helps you First of all, with your initial setup, allowing you to create uh, new target files for your other languages, uh, synchronizing the translation files. So for example, for once you get new updates to your app, keeping the translation files in sync. And most importantly, catching translation errors as early as possible, which by the way, you can also include as a step in your build pipelines which already allowed the company I work for to catch a lot of translation errors before they made it into the de develop branch. And apart from these features, there are also other features that we'll only glance on very briefly in this presentation. And finally, before we continue with the demo, first one more thing. So XLIF Sync is available as a VS Code extension, but also as a PowerShell module, uh, both of them being open sourced, available on GitHub, and not only targeted and used for Business Central extensions, but also for other target areas. And also, as you can see here, you can use the PowerShell module to catch translation errors in your build pipelines and throw an error or a warning in Azure DevOps uh, in your uh, pipelines. Okay, and with that being said, let's move on to the demo. So here I've prepared a little demo workspace in VS Code with an app that adds rewards to customers. So for example, here we have a reward table with a code field, a description, 
in a discount percentage field. And then also the customer table gets an extension which adds a reward ID field, which links a reward to a customer. And as you can see, the app does not have any translations yet. For that, we first need to compile the app with the translation file feature enabled. So let's do that. Open the common palette and run AL package to build the app. And now here in the translations, we have our generated XLIF file, which contains all captions and labels in our AL code. So let's have a look first by op opening the file with open externally, which will open the file with our default XLIF editor. In my case, that's PoEdit. And here we have all the labels and captions for our Business Central app, which we need to translate. So let's close this. And I'll say we want to add new translation files for, for example, Dutch and Belgian translations. For that, XLIF Sync has a command in the command palette. So let's use that. Let's open the command palette and then type in XLIF. And then we have a command called create new target files. First, we need to select the workspace folder. So let's use the first project. And then we can select the languages for which we want to create new translation files. So we want to create multiple. And then we can choose to create translation files for Dutch Belgium and Dutch Netherlands. Okay. So now we have our Dutch translation files right here. And we can open them with our editor again. And here we have everything we need to translate. And I can do that pretty quickly because I have everything in my translation memory here. So I have a short shortcut here, which would take everything from the translation memory. Now I'll do it one by one, but it's done very quickly. And that's it, it's translated. Let's close this. Okay, and that's perfectly fine, very straightforward. But now let's say I want to change my app and add and change some captions in my app. And for that, I've prepared a stash, which, will, which I will apply now. So here I have my stash commit. And here I have a stash which makes some changes to my app. So let's have a look. So in the reward table, I've now added a new field. And I've also changed the caption of the discount percentage to fix this error here. And for my table extension, I've changed this hard-coded message to an error message that uses this label variable. Okay, so let's build again with the AL package command. And we get a new generated XLIF file. And to also get the newly added captions and labels to our other translation files, we can use the command that's included in XLIF sync. That's called synchronized translation units. And we, could, and we can do that from the common palette here. But another option is to select the file here with the right mouse button and then choose synchronize translation units. So let's do that. And then all translation units will be synchronized to all translation files. So let's have a look at the Dutch translation file again. And here we see we have our new label, our new caption for our new field, and the fixed caption for the existing field. And as you can see here, this caption, the translation is marked as a needs work translation because the source text of the field caption has been changed, so we should also review the translation. And in this, this case, this is perfectly fine. So we say we remove this state. Also do the other translations. Close this again. And if we now sync again, and open up the file again. Then you will also see that remark that was earlier here from XLIF sync will have been removed as well.
because we resolved uh, we reviewed it, we reviewed the translation. Okay, and that's the basics for creating and updating XLIF files. Now let's see how XLIF sync can help to catch and resolve errors. So first of all, we have this command here. Let's open the common palette again. Type in XLIF. And then we have two commands for, first of all, checking for missing translations, which will check all translation files in the workspace. And here it says that the Belgian translation file uh, has some missing translations. And we can also directly open the file with this button here and then enter our translations. But next to that, XLIF Sync can also help to catch errors in the translation. And to give you an example of that, I've prepared another stash, which makes some other changes to my uh, AL code. So here it is, let's apply it. And let's have a look what is being changed. So in the page extension here, I've now changed this um, label here, which initially included only one placeholder and is now including multiple placeholders. Okay, so if we build this again, then we get again a new generated translation file. And we can sync that again. And if we now use the other command that we have to our disposal, then we can also check for problems in the translations. So let's run this. And now you see that in the Dutch translation file, there's also a problem detected. So let's have a look. And that's for the very first translation here. So the source text has changed. And now the um, check for need work translations command tells us that there's a problem detected, namely that the number of placeholders is no longer matching. So we should update the translation accordingly. And that's just one of the problems that XLIF Sync checks for. And there are a lot of other rules which you can check out in the, in the, in the readme of the extension, which is all perfectly documented. So please feel free to have a look. And one last thing I want to show in this demo to save you a bit of time is if you go to the user settings, we have all our XLIF Sync settings here. And one rec recommendation that I have is to set in your user settings, these two settings enabled so that these checks will automatically be formed directly after you sync your translation files instead of you need, you need to be doing that manually. And that's all for now for my short demo. So let's get back to the sheets. So what we saw is we can very easily create new target translation files and we can sync, uh, keep our translation files in sync. For example, when we have an update to our app, uh, also getting those new translation units to our other translation files for our ex existing files. And we saw that we can apply checks for missing translations and to detect any problems in the, tr in the translations. And also, if you synchronize your translation units, if the source text, source text changes, then XLIF Sync will also add a remark, add a note to your translation units to warn you about this so that you can review the translation in that case. And what I just, just show you, showed you, um, it's, an, it's recommended to also add, enable these two settings to directly check the trans translations after syncing. And you can further configure to your log, and you can further configure the rules to apply to check for problems with the need to work translation rules setting. And these rules, they can also be applied in your build pipelines as well with the PowerShell module. 
And then one other, other feature I wa want to show you uh, very briefly is that you can also parse your translations from your developer comments. And that is you can use snippets to directly add uh, the translations as a comment to your um, labels or captions. And when you synchronize your uh, translation files, then these tr translations will automatically be used as the initial translation for, for uh, the corresponding languages. And finally, some other features. Uh, for example, you can define equivalent languages. So say you have multiple Dutch languages, so Dutch, Netherlands, Dutch, Belgium, and you want to just use the same translations for both of them, then you can say, I want the NL, NL translation file to be the master language and simply copy to all other Dutch translation files the same translations. And we have some features like copying the initial translation from the source text, and you can also import translations from external files. And there are many more settings to further customize how Eclipse Sync works, completely uh, set it to your liking. Please feel free to uh, dive into the README. <laughs> there are a lot of settings for that. So if you don't like something that Eclipse Sync adds to your translation files, then you can simply disable that as well. Just an example. And if you have any ideas, issues, or contributions, please feel free to file an issue or a pull request on GitHub. And I would like to thank everyone who already made suggestions and made contributions. And again, I'm very open to new ideas, so please come in. That's good, Rob. And that's it. Yeah, clear, loud and clear. Was one thank question... you, and I'm uh, translating. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I have one question to you, and there was no question on the list, by the way, but the coloring on the state of the in the translation file is that part of this uh, this of your extension? Um, can you repeat your question so, again? Yes. Yeah, so if you go to VS Code and to the translation file, was it? A, the, I, I thought I saw a coloring on in this file. Oh no, probably oh, yeah, that was. That's correct. Was, yeah, that that, that uh, you mean this, right? Yeah. Yeah, yes, that's something that Xlift Sync does as well. Uh, okay. If you open the file in the VS Code editor, yep. then translations that have problems or need translation, they are all, all also marked as well. Oh, very nice. Okay. Thank you very much, Rob. You can hand over You're to uh, Johannes. Yes. So I'm making Johannes the presenter. Thank you, Rob. Very good presentation. It's always hard to follow up on a good presentation, but I'll try to do my best. You will. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you can see my screen? Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, our extension, NAB AL tools. Um, you will see that uh, me and Rob has. Uh, on the same uh, challenges in uh, ES code with AL and uh, solve the issues uh, or challenges in different ways. But uh, and I haven't seen uh, Rob's demo before, so I think we will overlap some parts here. But anyways, um, let's see. There, here we are. Uh, first, a bit uh, about me. Uh, my name is Johannes Wikman. I live in northern part of Sweden. I've been a developer in uh, with Navision and AV Business Central since a lot of years. Uh, Tell us a bit about my age, maybe. Uh, I work for uh, NAB Solutions here in Sweden. Uh, we're the Business Central Partner of the Year for a couple of more weeks, I think. Um, and NAB Solutions is a value-added reseller and a cloud service provider. My role at the NAB is uh, as a CTO and owner. Uh, and then we have our uh, another company that's called Smart Apps. Uh, that's our uh, ISV company where we build uh, apps for App Source. And there I'm I'm mainly a developer. Um, and to why was this extension born in the first place? Um, 
we uh, all, probably all of us, uh, found that uh, working with uh, AL, with uh, only the AL uh, language extension installed is uh, quite uh, challenging. Uh, so I tried to yeah, make life easier for myself and uh, also share, share this with others too. Make it easier for everyone, um, it, and also it's uh, very fun to learn a new language. Uh, I wrote this in TypeScript, which, which was a completely new language for me, and I was uh, inspired by a serious AL language extension that Waldo built. I first added some pull requests there, and then I thought, why shouldn't I build my own instead? Uh, and I first built it for internal use only, but uh, after a while I decided to publish it for everyone. It's also interesting with an open source approach. Uh, it's a bit new for me to share everything in open, but it's uh, also rewarding with the contribution from the community. It makes it a lot more fun. Thanks for that, all contributor, com contributors, uh, especially when a friend and a former colleague decided to uh, add his time to this as well. It's even more fun to do. Um, so there it is. And uh, of course, I love to build tools that I have use of myself. I have always built uh, toolings for NAV and VC. Um, the feature highlights uh, of this extension is um, as you saw earlier, I was, I'm working for two different companies as a value-added reseller developer and also ISV developer. Uh, and that uh, reflects on the functionality in the extension as well, I think. Um, so for a bar developer, uh, the, the features are mainly around uh, the translation nextlif features. Uh, where you easily can navigate between code and the uh, XLF files. Yeah, we have a visual uh, XLIF editor and the uh, functionality is similar to Rob's feature with sync translation units called refresh XLF from GXLF. And we have a feature to suggest translations um, from the base application or your own uh, external XLIF files or library or something like that. And uh, ISV developer, as an ISV developer, I'm using the functionality to create external documentation to use to as technical reference, and also uh, using the tool tips as base on documentation. And there's an Excel export import of translations and a small integration, kind of uh, with the Dynamics 365 translation service. Um, First, that is um, needed to teach you to navigate from AL to the XLF file. So, if you are in AL and you have a multi language property, just right click on that and select the find NAB colon find translated texts of current line. And uh, if you have one language in the workspace, it, it will navigate directly to that translation unit in your XLF file. Uh, but if you have more languages than one, uh, it will start a uh, search in file instead, and you will get all the translation units as search results instead. Um, and of course, you can navigate the other way around as well. From the XLF file, you right click inside any translation unit element. And select the NAB colon find so code source of current line or just hit F12. And it opens the AL file with the multi language property selected. And the refresh XLF from GXLF updates all the XLF files from the GXLF file. Um, so after you built your application, you use the refresh XLF from GXLF, and it adds new translation unit, units. And if you have suggestions that matches your source, it will add those as well. It removes deleted translations, detects some common errors, missing placeholders and other stuff. And it updates the sources. And it marks 
all translation units that needs attention with the NAB colon uh, and uh, what is needed, uh, not translated, review, uh, are those that are being used, and suggestion, of course. And then we have a, a note. You can see the third, uh, middle note in this in the picture uh, is added as well with a description, an explanation why this is being marked as review, because this one uh, is uh, missing a, a placeholder, it thinks, because it's a dash between the percentage and the, the one. Um, and we have uh, XLIF editor. You can right click in the XLIF file and select the uh, NAB colon edit XLIF document. There you have a, a visual editor that is a, a bit more user-friendly way of editing XLIF files. You just uh, edit the text for the target column and you tick the complete box uh, when done. Uh, and you, you, there's also um, a feature that you can filter out sources that's been uh, translated in different ways. If you have one source in uh, many places in your app, uh, you might have uh, different translations in different places. Uh, you can easily put it out there. And it's um, uh, my former colleague that's built that one. Uh, very nice feature. Uh, external documentation that we use to, as technical reference on our, our web page is based on both AL code and the XML comments in code. So we write documentation uh, for all public objects with public functions, uh, events, and table fields, and tooltips. And another page for deprecated features, uh, and uh, all objects and functions and everything that has an obsolete state pending is also added to the documentation. And uh, all this is created as markdown files uh, that we then use to use uh, docfx to transform to HTML and publish on the World Wide Web. So all our app source apps is uh, updated here. Uh, and the extension code is also possible to run uh, through um, with pipelines, um, just calling node with uh, this function. So we update uh, documentation through pipelines. Uh, import export to Excel. You can export translations to CSV file, uh, and someone that don't like to work with the VS Code can uh, translate, and you can import uh, translations from CSV file. Um, and also, um, small integration with the Dynamics 365 translation service, where you create zip files for both the GXLF file and uh, the old translation files that you can upload to the DTS service. And uh, it's open DTS with a project that you can configure. And uh, then you'd get the output, import that into your project, and uh, it handles the target states and uh, imports the translations. And also detect some common errors that DTS does. If someone wants to read more about the Dynamics 365 translation service, there's a link for that there. Um, they have some work in progress with a command line interface. Um, the update external documentation from pipelines is just completed and we have started to implement it ourselves. And also, work in progress to refresh XLF files to identify mistranslations in pipeline. So we jump into the demo. Um, first of all, uh, if you look in, on the extension page here, there's a readme that should include all features. Uh, so if you're looking for something, please have a look here and also the feature contributions. Um, you can also easily go to the repository to find our GitHub, uh, where you could create issues or pull requests for that. Um, feedback is always welcome. 
So the first demo um, is the refresh XLF. Just a very small uh, project here with some nonsense code. We got a few fields with captions. And we have a uh, yeah, procedure with the um, insert trigger with a few labels. And we have no translations, only the out generated ones. Uh, we could build this just to make sure that uh, everything is up to date. And then we used the. Uh, oh, the screencast has been shut off. Like that. That was better. Um, we have this uh, feature, NAB. Uh, all the features are functions here are prefixed with NAB. Uh, we have this great translation next left uh, for new language. And we enter the language code that we will use. Uh, and we will be asked if we want to match those translations from the base application. Of course, I want to do that. Now we have the results here. We can see that uh, three suggestions was inserted. Um, and we sh can now see the, the tags were added for the not translated ones. Um, and we have um, suggestions down here. Uh, so the code was found in base application, of course, and it's added as a suggestion. Um, and to work through all this, um, we have a feature for that. Uh, this one, NAB find next untranslated text, shortcut key, con control alt G. Um, and we use that, of course. Um, and control L Q. A lot of texts. Oh. And uh, if there's a suggestion that we just want to accept, I just delete that one. And sometimes there are several su suggestions for for a translation, as in this case, because it's somewhere in the base application they have forgotten to translate everything. Uh, I just uh, delete the ones that I don't want to keep and remove the NAB suggestion tag. And you can see here, um, this one, uh, there's the note that the, this extension added, because it added some suggestions, uh, new translations for the first one. But now, when I have removed all the tags and fixed everything and uh, hit Control Alt U, it detects that everything is being translated and those notes are not needed anymore. So they, they are removed. Um, so that's the fast translation mode I use. Um, and then we have the go to AL code, find code source, current line, just right click anywhere or press F12. And we can navigate to the multi-language property. And the other way around from uh, AL code, we can go to the XLIP file. Um, and of course, if we have another language as well, um, we can navigate to those, but now we get the search files instead. Okay, uh, let's remove that one. I don't want to translate to Danish. Um, 
And then we have the placeholder detection. If I mess this up, something like that um, could happen. And do the refresh uh, left file. That one is tagged with a review tag. And we have a text describing wh why. Uh, because the placeholder is not found, it's broken, like that. Um, let's remove the tag. And refresh, just a lot of time to remove any notes and check if there are some other errors. Um, we have the XLIF editor. Right click in the file or here or in the command palette as well, of course. Um, and we get the visual uh, part of the XLIF editor. And I see that the theming is not that good in the light theme. <laughs> You didn't test this one. I never used that one, obviously. <laughs> to do it for me, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't think that text is very good looking on the recording. But anyway, uh, use the dark theme, and this is, will be fine. Uh, <laughs> and we will fix this, <laughs> of course. Um, so this is the visual um, editor. Uh, OK, sorry, I might do some changes just to have something to change as well. Uh, you have a small uh, remark regarding yeah. time. Uh, you have a couple of minutes left, otherwise, oh. it's stuff has, has less. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, you can see the, you can filter out all those that need to be fixed. And, oh, sorry. And the, the text over here is should be uh, visible to see what's, uh, why it's there. And you just tick the complete to fix the, yeah, that it, that one is completed. And the XLIF file is uh, updated in the background. Um, I had prepared the DTS demo and the tooltip. Um, I can just show the very fast uh, tooltip demo. Uh, if we have the, yeah. Uh, we have a, a small table with procedures and pages uh, with tool tips. And uh, we use the generate external documentation feature. And it creates uh, some uh, markdown files with all the public objects. That is in the in this uh, solution, and uh, with procedures, a page for each uh, object and each procedures uh, with the uh, overloaded if you need that, and uh, also a page with uh, um, all the tooltips, um, like an overview of all the tooltips in all uh, pages, the actions and fields and parts. Um, it's very useful for us, at least. Uh, so we got it that um, published on the web. Um, nice. We get overview uh, documented and published on the web through pipeline, like that. And deprecated features as well. Yeah. Sorry for the overtime. Well, not that much, but uh, we all did a bit of overtime. Yep. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Johannes. Um, yep. Could you hand over to, there are no questions, by the way, could you hand over to uh, Christoph? Yes, of course. Here you go, Chris. Thank you. So I think we should have talked earlier <laughs> because some of your features are also in mind, the ALXML documentation. Um, let me move this around a little bit you're in view and we can hear you okay so um 
Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to close this uh, fantastic sessions here with my extension. First, a uh, few words about me. Um, my name is Christoph. I'm an NAV or BC developer since 2005. I'm the founder of the 365 Business Development, a small company in uh, Germany. We are focusing on ISV um, development and um, yeah, a little bit of our business as well. I'm a little active on Twitter. This is my Twitter handle. So um, some of you may know me. If not, please follow me. And today I'm going to show you the, as I said, AL XML documentation extension. And uh, while preparation of this session, Luke asked us, why the heck did you do this? And I thought it was a very good starting point for my presentation. So why XML and why this extension? Uh, well, I think we all know the documentation capabilities or possibilities in C site and CAL uh, were always a pain. Um, yes, we had the documentation trigger uh, where we could find some kind of more or less complete change log, um, but we had no way to document procedures or interfaces to make this understandable for other people. And with BC, there was some really cool new feature features. There was rich IntelliSense and other re really useful stuff, but there was still no way to document procedures. And there was still no way to make them understandable for other developers to interact or implement with our uh, source code. Especially with the introduction of runtime packages and uh, especially as well when you set show my code to false, um, there's a much higher need for that kind of documentation. As Johannes always, uh, also uh, said, you need some kind of, of technical documentation to to hand it off with your application. So um, I think you all know source code is, is mostly written once, but changed over and over again. And uh, it's also read over and over again. And uh, we all don't want to invent the wheel over and over again, but we want to reuse existing implementations and reuse existing business logic. This was something which which was very hard in, in, in Seaside, in my opinion. And uh, this is something which must be better in, in, in uh, extension and AL language. So uh, basically, this was my motivation to develop this extension, because I see or I saw the, the um, need of supporting other developers to, to understand and reuse existing source code and business logic. So, but why is XML documentation the solution? Well, first of all, XML documentation is not there to document your source code and make it understandable or readable. If your source code is, is too big, too, too, too large, your functions are too great, uh, too, too, too big, then it's, it's not a, it's not in, in, it's not for XML documentation to solve these problems. But XML documentations are there for for provide reusability for procedures and objects. They are intended to integrate business logic in other extensions, and therefore XML documentation can be really useful to help you and especially other programmers who will use your code to better understand and implement it. Additionally, it allows us to, to comment in a more structured way. Uh, back in Seaside days, Every partner had his own style and own um, comment style how to, to do things. Uh, but this is a structured and standard way, which is also common in other programming languages like C Sharp, for example. And it gives us the ability to deliver documentation as some kind of an additional application artifact. So what are the main features of my extension? Basically, there are four uh, right now. First of all, of course, we uh, create context-aware XML documentation. Um, in the beginning of AL, there was nothing delivered by Microsoft. So uh, I did this. And in the meantime, Microsoft um, delivered a small um, small snippet as well. So if you type triple slash, the Microsoft snippet appears as well. And 
provides a, a simple skeleton for XML documentation. What we try to do is a little different uh, because we try to suggest context aware documentations based on your parameters, based on your, on your return value and so on. The second main feature is exporting the XML documentation. Right now we are supporting uh, Markdown files and PDF files. So we can export it uh, like uh, Johanna said, uh, showed also in, in a Markdown format with multiple files, but we can also do this with one single PDF file, which you can ship um, with your app file to, to partners or anything else. Um, the third feature is to show information from the XML documentation directly as tooltips and as, as uh, IntelliSend, IntelliSense in VS Code. So if you document your procedure and you hover over the procedure, you see the example code, for example, the summary, for example. If you hover over the uh, parameters, you see this information as well. Um, and the last part is the diagnostic part. And um, this is especially there to, to ensure that all your procedures, all your public procedures, for example, are documented and completely documented. And if you change the signature of a an, of an procedure, you remove a parameter, you add a new parameter, the, the extension tries to, um, tries to um, notify you that, you that you have to change anything or adapt anything. OK, uh, but that's enough talking. Let's look at uh, VS Code. So I prepared a little, um, a little project, nothing really crazy, but I tried to use um, some interface because there's a special feature and um, some code units, some pages as well. In a matter of time, I um, prepared everything in different branches. So what you see here is basically a quite normal uh, AL project without any specific stuff it, without any XML documentation or so on. What we start with is we take a look to the settings file. And I want to start with uh, some introductions, what you can set up with my extension. First of all, there are two check properties, check object documentation information level and check procedure documentation information level, where you can enable, disable uh, the, the uh, whole functionality and you can say okay i would like to have an error an information or a warning if some uh, xml documentations are are missing um let's say it's disabled then you have to you can do the same on procedure level and additionally on procedure level you can specify which kind of access level you want to check so not every uh, procedure must be documented if you don't want this, but you can say, okay, all public, internal, local, or protected can be can be uh, documented. Um, the fourth parameter is to specify where you want to place your documentation files. So you can use an, an absolute path like uh, C, C, uh, C uh, backslash temp, whatever. Uh, you can a rel use a relative path, and you can use a placeholder for uh, you, uh, for um, determining the actual workspace path. So if you check in your settings JSON into your Git repository, it will work for all other developers in this project as well. The last um, setting is the documentation export schema. Um, as I said, we when you use when you export the documentation as a Markdown file. Um, the Markdown file, there will be created multiple Markdown files. And um, in this schema setting, we will create a project file and an object file for each object. If you want to separate this, you can say, okay, I want to create a project file, an object file for each object, and a pro procedure file for each procedure inside of an object. This will be sorted in, in different and separate folders. So if you select this uh, schema, the the uh, each object will will uh, create a folder where the procedure files will be placed. So um, let's switch the branch and let's say we enabled we enabled the um, 
warning, uh, the, 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 the uh, diagnostics. And this is what you here see is basically the reason why my extension got the most of it, the most extension for. Um, at the days where Waldo added my extension to the uh, Waldo extension pack, um, a few days earlier, I added the diagnostics into it and I decided to enable warnings on, uh, on the information level for procedures. And um, it was really funny because uh, the most people on Twitter and JAMA uh, got totally crazy because they, they got thousands of, of warnings uh, and don't know where it come from. So um, what you here see is it mentions all procedures based on my configuration. So I set just public and internal. Uh, and based on my uh, configuration, it says, okay, which, which um, procedure needs the documentation. You can use a quick, a quick uh, fix to add a suggested documentation with summary and uh, based on your signature, the parameters. Um, you can do this manually by, or the same way like Microsoft did it with triple slash. And you see, this is the uh, skeleton Microsoft provides, and this is what we provide. So we add um, the data type, we add the uh, record, if it's, it's a record variable, we add um, summary um, tag for, for the extension name. And you can add additional um, additional uh, XML tags, like the example code, like remarks, um, to add code to your uh, procedure to, to guide other developers how to use your procedure. Christoph, just so I will note, not fix this. Christoph, one note, yeah. uh, on time, we have three, maximum five minutes, OK? OK, I hurry up a little bit. Um, so then let me skip this one and go directly in here. Now I have added all um, XML documentations. I prepared this. And uh, what I want to show you is specifically this here. We have an interface and the interface is also procedures, of course, and all the procedures were documented. And we have a lot of interface implementations in here and we have the possibility to do specific um, documentations for the implementation of the interface, of course, but you have also a possibility to inherit the documentation from the original implement uh, from the original interface. By the way, this is a feature Rob requested, if I am uh, not completely wrong. So uh, the credit deserves him. Um, additionally, I am in the wrong branch. I want to go there. I added a code example in here to show you when you hover over the function. And it, of course, works if you call the function and not only here. You see the example code in here. It's it's highlighted uh, with AL, with AL uh, um, language syntax. And um, you can over, also hover over the customer. Scroll down a little bit. And you see the, uh, um, the description of the customer in here. And to hurry up a little bit more. We have a few commands in here, so we can export the documentation. This is exported as Markdown. We can use this PDF, um, and we can export a single file. We are or updating a single file uh, ex uh, documentation. So if I press export, recreate a lot of a uh, lot of stuff here. Create a index file. This is a project file I mentioned earlier in the settings where you see the, the title of the extension, the version, the publisher, the uh, brief description from the, from the app manifest and all the objects. Of course, you can um, click on it and see the procedures in here with all the documentation, with example code, if, if set and so on. And you can do something like this. So you can specify, um, you can specify code examples in a parameter as well. So let's imagine you, you um, expect a specific JSON structure, a specific JSON object, uh, then you can put it in here to make clear for the customer, uh, for the other developer to, uh, to interact with your, with your procedure, how to use it. 
and it will also be uh, shown highlighted, syntax highlighted um, at this point. And last but not least, uh, export as PDF will create one single PDF file um, in a second where you have all the, as all the, the documented objects in, inside and you see um, you see the, the complete exact same information, but you can ship this as one single document to your customer or to your partner or whatever or whatever. Okay, let's switch very fast back to the presentation. Um, what's next? What we are planning next? Uh, the biggest problem we have to deal with, in my opinion, is that we want to uh, support runtime packages and show my code faults uh, extensions. So we have no possibility to go to definition in this case, so no possibility to read this. So we plan to export an XML file, which you can ship with your extension to pl put it in the into the um, uh, AL package, uh, AL project folder, and we will read this in, in uh, VS Code to provide tooltips and IntelliSense and all this stuff. Okay, that was quite fast at the end. You did, you did well. I pressed you, of course. Thank you very much, Christian. <laughs> um, and everybody else, uh, Johannes and Rob also did very well. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, there are no questions. And uh, yeah, we're just past the hour, so we're going to close. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, I always have a look at the number of people here. It's a, a compliment that before the hour, not many people left. Uh, which normally is often the case, five minutes to the hour, people well, we need to get out, I don't know, for dinner or whatever. So, um, Johannes, Rob, and uh, Christoph, a big compliment. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to uh, close the uh, uh, webinar today. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Have a nice evening, nice rest of the day. And uh, well, we might meet in two weeks when uh, Mark will be our next speaker. So, uh, bye for now.